Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm going to introduce you guys to a more complex database query that we're going to be using for the rest of the course. And so up to this point in the course, we've learned a lot of stuff with SQL. We learned how to create tables, insert data into those tables. We learned about the different data types. Um, we also learned how to update and delete data, and we learned how to query and select data from the database, right? So we learned a lot of the core concepts in SQL. And up to this point, if you guys have been following along, then you have a pretty good fundamental understanding of the different things that we can do in SQL. Now, obviously we didn't cover everything, but we covered a lot of the basics, right? And we've been using this student table, which just has three columns, uh, one primary key, and you know, we learned how to create this table. We learned how to insert all of this information. Uh, we learned how to update and, and delete, and then also just you know, query for the specific language. Here's the problem though, is this is a very simple example, right? I mean, it's, it's one database table and it only has uh, three different columns. But in reality, database schemas are gonna be a lot more complex than this, right? Uh, the chances of your database schema just having one table is gonna be pretty slim. And so, you know, to really master SQL and to really, uh, you know, learn about all the different features, and there are certain features that we haven't covered yet uh, that I wanna cover, we're gonna need a more complex database schema, right? There's certain things that I just can't show you guys on the student table because it's just not complex enough, right? So what I actually did is I went ahead and designed uh, another database schema. So I actually designed a database that could be used for a company. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull that up. And right here we have our company database. And you can find this PDF uh, in the description below. I'll put a link to it. But basically this is the database schema that we're gonna be using for the remainder of the course. So this is a more complex database schema, but because it's complex, it's going to give us some awesome opportunities to query it, right? In other words, the more complex the database schema, the more complex the queries we're gonna be able to write and play around with. Because there, it, there was only so many types of queries that we could write for that student table. But this is gonna be a better example for us uh, to learn about different types of queries and stuff like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and walk you guys through this schema in this tutorial. That way you guys understand it. Because if you, don't, if you can't wrap your head around it, then you're not gonna be able to follow along with uh, the rest of the course. So I'm just gonna give you guys an explanation of this and that way we have it going forward. So this database schema maps out uh, the database for a company, right? So this would be like the information that we might wanna store about a company. So up here we have our first table, which is the employee table. And so this is just gonna store information about employees. So we're storing like the employee ID, the first name, the last name, birth date. Uh, so you'll see here, this is actually a date. Sex, which is gonna be male or female. Salary, which would be like how much they make. And then over here, we have two foreign keys. So the primary key of this table is the employee ID over here, which we have in red. The foreign keys are going to be these keys over here in green. And basically a foreign key is just, it's gonna store the primary key of uh, an entry in a different table, right? So we have two foreign keys. The first here is super ID. That stands for supervisor ID. So an employee in our company is gonna be able to have a supervisor. And a supervisor is actually gonna be in an, another employee. So super ID is gonna point to another employee in the employee table. We also have branch ID. So different employees in the company are gonna be able to work for different branches. And you'll see down here, we have this branch table and it just has a branch ID, a name, and then also some other stuff which we'll talk about. So an employee can work at a branch, right? And that's kind of what we're storing over here. So let's take a look at this. We would say that the employee Michael Scott his super ID is 100. That means Michael Scott's supervisor has an ID of 100. So Michael Scott's supervisor is going to be David Wallace, right? Because David Wallace has an employee ID of 100. Uh, Kelly Kapoor has a supervisor ID of 102. That means Kelly Kapoor's supervisor is going to be employee number 102, so it's gonna be Michael Scott, right? So hopefully that makes sense, right? Uh, an employee can have a supervisor, and super ID is a foreign key which points to the employee ID of another employee. And then we also have branch ID over here again, and this will point to the branch. So branch ID, um, Angela Martin has a branch ID of two. That means Angela Martin works at the uh, Scranton branch. 
Um, Andy Bernard has a branch ID of three. That means Andy Bernard works at the Stanford branch. So hopefully uh, that kind of makes sense. And then down here, like I said, we have the branch table and the branch table just has an ID, a name, and it also has a manager ID. So on the branch table, we're actually storing the ID of an employee who is the manager. So this is actually a foreign key. So manager ID is going to point to one of the employees up here. So we would say that the manager of the Scranton branch has an ID of 102. So the manager of the Scranton branch is gonna be Michael Scott, because he has a 102. The manager of the Stanford branch has an ID of 106. So the manager of the Stanford branch is Josh Porter because he has an ID of 106. Hopefully that makes sense. And then we're storing uh, the date that the manager started being the manager. So now we'll check out the client table. So the client table has a client ID, client name, and also has a foreign key branch ID. So we would say that the client Dunmore High School uh, you know, works with branch number two or the client Times newspaper works with branch number three. So Dunmore High School would be a client of branch number two, which is the Scranton branch over here, right? Hopefully that makes sense. Um, the Times newspaper is a client of branch number three, which is the Stanford branch. So that's kind of how those are connected. And then over here we have another one, which is a uh, branch supplier. So this has a compound primary key or a composite key. And the first part of it is the branch ID. So a branch supplier is obviously going to store the branch ID and it's also going to store a supplier name. So it's important to notice that we need a uh, composite key here because um, the branch ID doesn't uniquely identify each row and the supplier name doesn't uniquely identify each row. Only together can they uniquely identify each row. And then the last table down here is the works with table. So this basically defines the relationship between employees and clients. So we're going to go ahead and assume that an employee can work with a client and sell the client like different products, right? So employee 105 sold $55,000 worth of paper to client 400. Employee number 108 sold $22,500 worth of product to client ID 402, et cetera. So this is kind of mapping the relationships uh, between employees and clients and telling us how much a certain employee sold to a certain client. And you'll see this is also a composite key. So this is the database schema that we're going to be working with for the rest of the course. And like I said, in order to kind of show you guys some more advanced SQL queries, we're going to need a database schema that is, you know, complex, just like this one. If this isn't super clear to you, what you might want to do is just kind of look over the PDF that I'm going to include in the description below. And really what you want to do is just trace the relationships. So, you know, like really make sure that you understand how this database schema is put together, how everything relates to each other. And then going forward in the course, we're going to be using this database schema. So in the next tutorial, I'm going to show you guys how to create this. So I'm going to actually give you all of the code for creating this entire database. And then from there, we'll go ahead and we'll start learning some more advanced queries and some more advanced stuff that we can do. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.